Replace fear with the confidence to make sales. Developing offers, honing communication, building relationships, intentionally creating success for yourself, your customers, and your community. Join Corey Barrier and Callie Keene as they learn and share the exact strategies to harness ADHD into a superpower. Join us as we become sales legends. All right. What's up, brother? We're live. What's up, man? You have been all over the place this week. I see you're like you're like Jet Set Corey now, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, look, this is such a great way to start this conversation because if you know, anybody that's listening that even has an inkling of ADHD will identify with the crazy shit that happened with me this week. So uh, l- let me just tell you. So <laughs> the, fir- the first thing that happened was I missed my first flight out to San Antonio for the speaking, the speaking um, academy. Then, no, that's not true. I made it out okay. I missed my flight leaving San Antonio is what happened. And then, of course, they couldn't get me on another flight. So I had to stay overnight. I get back to Raleigh, finally, on Wednesday, and then fly back out on Thursday. I get to the airport on Thursday, miss my fucking flight again. Mm. Oh, I missed the flight again. So um, then I left my phone in the back of an Uber. Like, it has been as ADHD as I possibly could have been this week. And this is one of those weeks, Callie, that you're like, just kick the shit out of yourself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't usually have a lot of those weeks. This week was one of those weeks. I'm like, damn, dude. Like, well, you're moving through a lot of evolutions too. You're, you're making moves. You're talking to people. I don't think we, we want to share right now all the different pieces that you're putting into place, but it's, it's a lot to just mentally process. And I think really that's what it is. It's like you're putting a lot in the, in the hopper, right? You're putting a lot of uh, irons in the fire for later this year, or even like later, just like next month. Right. So then you're, you're like mentally processing all those pieces. And then little things like, uh, I got to pack my suitcase for tomorrow morning and oh, tomorrow morning's come and you haven't packed your suitcase. Right. Which is exactly what happened. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly what happened. Yeah. I mean, like, it is like, and look, it all comes, down, it comes down to, to organization, really. And, you know, it is what it is. But let's, all right, so let's dive into, you know, the topic today. I love this because this is, you know, having a, a powerful discovery method, asking valuable customer pain points, right? And that, this, this comes with, Even if it's your customer currently, you still have to ask valuable customer pain points, right? You still have to ask uh, hard questions. And sometimes, Callie, these questions are uncomfortable, right? Like, you know, why don't you just stay where you are and not do anything about your situation and keep complaining? What's wrong with where you're at right now? Right. Yeah. Like, oh, hard. I could always do better. I'm like, mm, that doesn't sound like a customer I want to chase after. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. I, could always, I could always be a little bit better. I'm like, right. that's how you, being alive works. Uh, that's not <laughs> how a burning bridge problem works, right? I'm on a burning bridge. I need right. help. I'll sell to that guy, right? Beyond the guy yeah. that I'm on a leisurely stroll. Dude, I love, I love, love, love this because. We see it in a couple different ways and we see it in roofing sales and plumbing. And then we see it in like, I, I dealt with this, with the startups is like go out and they have a, an idea, they have a product idea and they're like, how do I sell this idea? I'm like, well, what are your customers trying to do? Like, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. They're like, what are you trying to do? And they're like sell stuff. I'm like sell my product to I'm everybody. Like, Dude, it's literally written down right here. In front of me, because I'm going to talk about this from a totally different angle uh, later, is like we would tell them we we used to tell them. And this is what most startup coaches would would say is like, what problem do you solve? What problem do you solve? And two people don't they don't know that they don't know. But here I want to make this super easy for everybody. And this is like it is definitely one of the unlocks in me selling stuff. And it's super. Dude, so easy. This is this is how you shift alignment. Instead of trying to figure out what problem you solve, you figure out what your customers are trying to do. 
And I just go ask them and I say like, well, what are your customers trying to achieve? And they're like, uh, they have a flooded house. Like, no, 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 no. What would it be like if, if they, what, what do they feel when they have a flooded house? Right. They feel anxiety. anxiety. They feel, they feel like that they are inadequate as a, as a provider. They feel like their investment is, is being damaged. So they, they have fear and loss and all of these emotions. I was like, so what do you sell? You sell the opposite of that. You sell assurance. You sell comfort. You sell one of those burdens is not on their plate. You're going to take that off of your hands. You sell them freedom, peace of mind, these powerful things. That's what you're selling them. That's what the problem that you solve is that they don't have problems. And if you can tap into that emotion and that power of that thing and say, well, what are they trying to achieve? They're trying to move on with their life. They're trying to not have to deal with a flooded basement. They're trying to not have to deal with their roof leaking. They're trying to not have to deal with whatever that thing is that you're selling. And I've never, ever failed to figure this out from coaching people to, you know, you and I talking to people in blue collar sales to me working in tech sales, working in startups. I've never, ever found a successful business that doesn't move towards becoming an expert at helping people achieve their goals. Absolutely. You're right. And so, you know, I, I want to p- kind of pivot this for a second. And I had this conversation with a guy this weekend um, and he's wanting to build, he's wanting to produce a product. And I asked him, I said, well, how do you know who's going to buy the product? I said, who, or, or better yet, maybe a better question is who's going to buy the product? Mm. Who wants who wants the product? How do you know people want the product? And he was like, I mean, I don't know. I'm like, well, you got to find that out because that's cool. He was like, I well, I think it would be great. It's literally what he said. He was like, because <laughs> I think it would be good. I'm like, here's the problem with that. You know, everybody's not doesn't think like you. And so even though you think it's the coolest shit on the planet, if 99.9% of the rest of the planet don't think it's cool. It's not problem. cool, man. <laughs> right. Cool. Right. Yeah. Cool is is a uh, is assigned by external, right? It's like it's like other things that we're arguing about. Is like when I describe something, it is descriptive in, in a subjective sense, right? So like it's me saying, like, it, of course I think my idea is cool. I wouldn't have spent two minutes on it if I didn't think it was cool, right? <laughs> I wouldn't have bothered Corey about it if I didn't think it was cool, but. And it's your idea, right? That's, I mean, it's, it's of, of, of course it's subjective. Like, of course it's subjective. Like, it's your idea. Dude, but how many people have you met, right? How many people have you helped with their sales where they thought starting their own business was going to be cool, and then they started it and they realized how uncool it can be? Oh, my God, dude. It's <laughs> unbelievable. It, yeah, people think they want to be a business owner because they think, that it's that the, it's the guy at the top. Just because you're the business owner, you're automatically at the top, right? You just got to tell people what to do. You're no, at the bottom of work. everything. You got to the bottom of everything. Right. A million bosses now. Everybody, yeah, dude. Customers, are your boss. Vendors are your boss. Employees are your boss. <laughs> yeah, like you got to answer to more people than you did if you were just an employee. Like it's a lot more difficult than what you think. Oh, it's a lot of moving parts too. A lot of moving parts. Well, but- how does discovery play in and in, play into that? Because you know you can replace "cool" with whatever word that you want. You could say like, "Well, I think this is a great offer." You know, we we talk about killer offer, right? Or magnetic offer, or an offer so good it sells itself. Something worth sharing. And you you think like, "Oh man, that's so good." But then, how does discovery go into really honing that into a sales program that's going to well, okay, so look at it like this. Okay, so let's just say it's uh, – let's take Grant Cardone. Let's just use him as an example because right. everybody knows who Grant Cardone is. Yeah. Well, so if I go to Grant Cardone's uh, a post and, and he, that he does about his uh, a boot camp that he's doing, and in the comments I see, you know, 50 comments that say, Grant, this boot camp fucking sucks, and I can't believe you put it on again. And and then, in you know, the comment below says, yeah, he was like – you know, it was a pitch fest. It was nothing, right? And the comment below is like, yeah, Grant, it sucks. 
in the comment below is like, yeah, it felt like I was just at a sales conference. The point is, is now I know what people are complaining about that conference, right? Or that program or that boot camp. I know what they're complaining about. I know what problem he's not solving. I right? also know that that people wanted it enough to attend it one time or enough to watch the video or enough to watch the video and comment or read the and. comments and come back after they did it and comment on it. You know, so, you know, that there's probably an audience of people that wanted to tap into whatever that offer was initially. That's dude. That is like an unbelievable tip. It's an unbelievable tip. People are using social media to waste all of their time. And they're not using social media to really do the research. And right. uh, that, dude, that's such a good tip. This is, it, it's a totally different angle than, than what uh, I usually talk about. But this is why I'm a big fan of my 5X leader list. Right. right? It's make the five people that if you were to do business with them, it would change your life, change your business, follow them. Promote what they do. Really get in the weeds. Read all the comments because for for me, my you know my brand of sales is I'm looking for a chink in their armor. I'm looking for a gap where they're not offering the thing that their customers want, and that that's the thing that I can offer and do. So then I can say, hey man, I noticed that every time you post, somebody asks about this. Well, what if I did that for you? What if I did all the work? Right. Would that be something that you would send out to your email list? Would that be something that you would be interested in talking about? Would you like to go live with me and talk about that? Boom. Now I have access to all of Grant Cardone's customers. Right. Right. But For what me, is Grant, what I peep my thing, but like every, we're just going to continue that, that. Yeah. But what do you not do? You, what you don't do is say, hey, Grant, I can help you with this thing. And by the way, we'll split whatever we make on it. We'll split the money, man. Yeah. It's like, uh, yeah, sure, like, sure thing. No. <laughs> right. I mean, like it's, it, and that's where a lot of people mess up. We've talked about this, and I'll tell you a really funny story, and it also actually involves Grant. So, um, Sean's marketing guy, one of Sean's marketing guys, he's got two guys, Matt and Alex. And so, Matt told a story this weekend or this, this at the fly in, and he said, Give everybody a little bit of background for uh, yeah, sure. So, so we're part of the the Lions Den, which is uh, Sean Whelan's group, it's a coaching group, um, entrepreneur group, business, a lot of business owners, a lot of salespeople. Um, and so we do a, in our group they, they do a Friday fly-in. I call it a Friday fly-in, but really it's a Thursday fly-in. Um, and you come and you hang out with Sean for the day and learn and. You know, learn from different people. Ryan Williams was there, which was super cool. And Brian and Bobby was, well, he wasn't there for that. But anyway, point is, like, it was it was really cool. And so Matt was telling, they were telling us about how they did. Matt was telling the group and telling Sean for the first time how he got to Sean. And he said it was really simple. He said, I I went to, dude, you're going you're gonna to lose your mind when I tell you this. He said, I went to Grant Cardone's page. He said, and everybody that I saw Grant Cardone in a picture with, I friended him on Facebook. Every single person. He said, then I did that to Ryan Stuman. And then I did that to Sean Whalen. And look where I'm sitting right now. On the stage in Sean Whalen's warehouse as his CMO or whatever he is. Mm -hmm. Right. And so the point is it's exactly what we've been working on to a degree. Oh, in yeah. a different, a little bit different angle, a little bit more, a little bit in more, a little bit more in, in depth. Yeah, but let's that, bring this to discovery, man. Is that is that sometimes, and and this is like again, this is kind of my approach to things. Is the question that I always ask people, because if we're talking about discovery and understanding their customers, most people can't answer this question initially. But the people that can, we can rapidly scale them up pretty much as big as they can stand. I'm not going to say, hey, I can turn any business into a, you know, a seven figure or eight figure business because a lot of people can't, dude, they can't stand it, right? They, they, they don't want that, right? So I'm not going to tell you that, but I ask them who already owns your audience. And by that, I mean, there is some person or some brand or some business that's out there that their customer list, who are people that already know, like, trust them, have spent money on their product they've already posted a review they already think man that is the shit 
right? Who they they already have their phone number. They already have their email address. They already have their physical address. They already have their name. They already have key pieces of information like when they spent money, how much money they spent, maybe reviews, maybe how many times they've purchased. Who already owns your customer audience? And people are like, I don't know. I, I don't know. To say, well, what brands do your customers really like? Who do they follow? Who are the thought leaders that they follow? And that tells me a lot about their culture, about their mindset, about the alignment. And because if they say, well, everybody that buys my customer, they're kind of like this. You know, they believe in freedom. They believe in gun rights. They believe in this. I'm like, hmm, sounds like a lot like Sean Whalen followers to me. So I can do more customer intelligence in this pot, right? In this little group of people. If they said, yeah, everybody kind of, they like flashy cars. They like traveling around. They're like Miami, LA, New York. You know, they like planes. They like smooth talking. I'm like, sounds like Grant Cardone's audience, you know? So, so look, pro we know that proximity is power. And we say that all the time. We've run that kind of into the ground. But to, to understand, like, if you wanted Sean Whalen as your conduit, like your, your partner or somebody to co-sign on you just to say like, yeah. You know, Corey, he's the sales CEO. You need sales help. You help get help with this guy. Dude, you can't just write it down on the leader list and hit him, hit him hard, right? But if you go and you discover every single person that's close to them, what they need, you be of service. And then you're like, we talked about bad penny the other day. You're like, you're like the good dollar, right? Every time you turn around, it's like, man, it's Corey every time. It's Corey every time. Oh, who'd you do that with? Oh, who helped you out? Who posted that? Boom, 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 boom. You're supporting them. You're getting close to them, but you're also learning, man. You would be able to answer this. What is your customers trying to achieve? Because you've helped all the people around them achieve it. Right. That's right. <laughs> you're no, you're absolutely you're absolutely right. I was thinking for a second there when so you know, another part to the discovery process too is understanding like what it is that you're good at and what it is that you're wanting to do. Right. That's also a, another angle to this process. Right. Cause in, w while you're trying to figure out the problem that you solved um, at the same time, you're probably going to figure out what problems you, you don't want to solve because I'll tell you, like I've worked with people that I, I don't want to work with again. I'm going to tell you that of course I have. Right. Not everybody's amazing to work with, but guess what? You learn that. Right. So anyhow, Dude, it's different. Acknowledge, acknowledged weakness. When you discover your weaknesses and you acknowledge them, they are your strengths. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you why. And this is why we have ADHD sales legends is because we can tap into them and our inclination as, as optimists, as entrepreneurs, as people that are trying to change our life, do something great, you know, be a better provider, be a better community member, whatever it is, is, oh, I'm going to work on that weakness. And that's, that's fine. That's great. Right. It's a good mindset to be in. It's also a way to beat up your confidence is to put yourself in a position where you constantly are going against your own nature and failing. So I don't want that. I want people to have some kind of emotional intelligence and understand that this is why weaknesses are strengths is that if you know that you don't want to deal with something, there is someone in your community that that's what they do. And that's what they love. So as long as you have the ego to say, I'm going to be the best at this thing that I'm the worst at, you are missing the opportunity to partner with somebody that could take your life to a 10 X level. You will fill in the gaps for them. We, we talked about this, your master of sales, Somebody else is going to be a master of business systems, right? They're not a master of sales, right? right? Sell for them. Everyone that you sell, they do the business processes. It's a natural combo, right? You could replace that with customer service. You could replace that with a different element of execution. You could replace that with marketing, right? Almost every marketer that we talk to, they're terrible at sales. They're the worst salespeople I've ever met. Probably marketing people. This is unbelievably world. bad, right? And you think, well, like, you don't want to set up the systems for marketing. Now, what are you going to do, Corey? You're going to you're going to have another uh, instance like with 
with trying to figure out how to edit videos and and like push through or are you going to connect with somebody who can do that for you like you say don't do the things that you hate and dude that's, that's so powerful man so powerful yeah, it is and and look it and it's this is also super important in with, with what we're talking about here when you're finding that person because not not everybody's going to work right not everybody's going to be able to work with you especially god knows if you're like me or, or cali like you know well, I'll, I'll speak for myself. You're like me. I'm all over the place. And, and if you're working with me, you got to understand, you got to understand that, right? That's in, invaluable for somebody to understand that. So when you're hiring people out, make sure that, that you communicate with them why you're hiring them out and your, in your issue, like your pain points, for example, like if, if it's a following up or if it's, you know, sending an email or whatever the thing is, doesn't matter what it is. Right. So, but yeah, you've got to hire that stuff out because if you focus on the wrong, if you focus on the things that you're not good at, you're literally wasting time and missing opportunities and losing, you're costing yourself money is what you're really doing. Man, absolutely. So just put a fine point on this in the discovery process is like, dude, figure out what your customers are trying to achieve, figure out how you help them achieve that in a very fine point. Everything that you don't do, that's a chance to collaborate with somebody, okay? It's not a chance for you to grow a bloated business or to learn 10 trillion skills and be um, just all over the place because I know that that's the temptation, right? That's what we're really talking about fighting is I don't want you to have 80 different customer avatars and you're discovering all the different problems that exist that you can possibly solve. I want you to have one customer, one channel, one offer, one thing that you do, right? You pose it in a certain way. When I say one offer, I mean like you're going to offer peace of mind. You're going to be the king of peace of mind in plumbing, right? You 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 can do toilets and you can do pipes, right? It, that's It's not what I mean by offer. It's like you don't just do the one action, but you have that one single message, really easy to understand. Figure out what that is. Everything that's not that thing that you're going to do, you get a partner for. You don't decide that you're going to start a flooring company because every time somebody has a, a basement leak that their floors are ruined, you just partner with a flooring company. <laughs> that's right. Right. And, and get paid with and get paid for that. Right. You know, right. yeah, it's really easy. And but and I think the, the getting paid portion is a really important part because a lot of people do this without getting paid for it. And and that's okay sometimes. It just depends on the situation, right? Um, anyway. But yeah, I think that's great, man. I, I love this part. I love asking valuable customer pain points. I love asking valuable customer questions. I, I just, I love, I think questions are, man, I mean, that's where you get to the, I mean, that's where, it's how you get to the solution. You just have to ask really great questions. This is this is what I, I really like about your program, man, is teaching people this because I don't think anybody that you've talked to or that we've talked to, they even have a discovery process in there and something that I do because I can f expand the value proposition, right? The idea of, of like all the issues in, in their head and then I can figure out, well, what are they willing to pay for if I can say like, hey, you know, what are you trying to do? do this and do this there's like other opportunities but also i want people to to take this and and dial it back in time a little bit too if you're thinking about starting a business you're thinking about launching or selling a new service selling a new product go out and talk to 10 people 10 of the same kind of person so people that belong to your community that are possibly your type of customer your customer avatar and just ask them like, Hey, you're, you're a, you're a homeowner, you know, Hey, you're a, a homeowner that has, you know, lived in your house for 20 years. Hey, you're a product business that just did a, you know, investment raised two years ago. Hey, you know, and I talked to 10 of those types of people and say, tell me about that. And guess what, Callie, what's the word? The 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 best the best or the worst thing whichever way you want to look at it it's going to happen is you might just find out this is not what you want to do this right. is not what you need to do the worst Which, thing that is going to happen is 
I'm going to take those people and I'm probably going to direct them to go talk to a friend of mine and say, you know, that's not, that's not really what I do, but I'm like, Hey, this is one of the reasons I get on the phone with people a couple times a week. 99% of the time, I am not the person that they're going to hire hundred percent of the time. I find a way to help them, whether it's something I know or a way to direct them to somebody that I know, right? I sent people to you, yeah. send people to our friends, et cetera. Yeah. But, but like what that does for me is I'm not worried about making a sale there. What I'm worried about is making a friend, building a community and figuring out what the hell do people actually want? What are they trying to achieve? What do they know? How do they talk about it? Because then when I go and sell, I can almost make a little mental map like, okay, it's this kind of person. This is probably the fears that they have. And I can just listen to the story that they have and they say, oh, that's kind of like this person. And when I do that actual discovery process, it's just like in your, your program and ask people what, what they're trying to do. Oh man, it's like I got the role playing practice, but not with the people on my team, but like with actual other people. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Super. yeah and that's, it's, it, right. And that's like, well, that's like the cherry on top, but mm -hmm. you're getting practice, right? Yeah. Talking about what you're trying to do. So yeah, it's, I think that's great, man. I think that's, um, yeah, that's it. I think that's all I got. But listen, <laughs> if you're watching, you're watching this and you're not a part of, uh, sales legends, the link is across the screen. We'll also put it in the comments, uh, and in the show notes. All right. Yep. Cool. Thanks, brother. All right, brother. Thank you, man.